short interjection. This video was supposed to be a response to why Web Dev Cody doesn't like inversion of control containers. It uh, de-escalated into writing our own dependency injection container and uh, the response is very short and secondhand. I wasn't sure if I should discard it and just go directly into it. Maybe this is interesting for context. I don't know. Enjoy. Run method. Okay, I found it. Now, what write method is this calling? Well, this is going to take me to an interface as well. So now I'm just like super confused because I'm like, dude, I have no... Of course you are. So the reason it takes you to an interface or a type is not because you're using a dependency injection container, but because you're using inversion of control, which your previous example, your other solution, the one you're advocating for, also does. If you control click on a uh, function there, you would also get booted to the type definition if you control click the dot write function. Now, you don't make yourself dependent on a dependency injection container, not really. Um, on this one, it's a bit different because I don't like how this one is made. We're going to make our own. Let's do that. Um, but before that, let me address the um, dependency configuration route. Um, so your dependency injection has a configuration that you need to read to understand where things come from. That is correct. If you use the other method though, you have to do the exact same thing, but the, instead of looking at the uh, configuration of the dependency injection container, you would be looking at your composition root, wherever that is and however that is, and maybe possibly split across many, many, many different files. I'm not advocating for either, both have their places. Uh, I prefer a configuration root that or a composition route that is clear where it's all in one thing. And a dependency injection container gives us the opportunity to do that. Right, so let's do something fun like defining completely unnecessary things from scratch. Here I got a simple TypeScript program. All it does is print out me nothing else. Let's delete this. So we want to build a dependency injection container. The dependency injection container is an in end effect, just a map of some prop to some thing. I know it sounds stupid, but that's basically what a dependency injection container is. Uh, it allows you to ask for some prop for something under some name and it'll construct that thing for you somehow. Now to build a container and to build it tight in a painless way, because the container he demonstrated was also kind of painful to configure. Um, we can do types that have memory of some sort. Uh, let's let's do that actually. And excuse the bumbling through TypeScript a bit. It's been a solid one and a half plus years since I actually wrote TypeScript. So eh. anyway, so we have our dependency container of some sort which takes in a key and we're extending string here. We could probably also extend symbol and numbers, but I'm going to, this is a proof of concept. I'm not going to build a, a fancy dependency injection container, just one that works. And we uh, need some memory here. So there's our memory. And the way we're going to uh, do this is we can use our memory and add this here into our new property that we got here, like so. Uh, we're going to modify this probably because I suspect that value should be a function, but we're going to discover that in a second. Uh, so if we see and test quickly if whatever we're doing here makes sense, and if we look at A, we see that it's just an empty thing. This is how our memory will work if we add another one here based on A. Mm. Then we see that if I peek at B, we're going to get both. This is a bit easier to see if I do a C here and I say this is of type B and I'm just gonna do a crime here, ignore this, uh, but we see that it has both C and other in it. Now, this isn't very useful because we don't want to do this manually. This looks like a pain, right? So let's add a managing container around it of some sort. This one also needs memory and we'll give it a single function called register. And this function has to be typed similarly to our memory up there. This probably should also be a function. 
uh, but we'll uh, address that when we get, get to it. And what does this return? Well, it should return a new container with our dependency in here, key value and our memory applied to this. Now, if we use this, this is gonna be very useful. Now, this has this register thing, and if we call this with some other here, uh, the value, and if we peek at A now, we should see that it has this memory in the type. It's not going to be useful to us because it's only in the type, so if we do A dot, we don't see it. And the way we can get around of it, uh, out of this is by adding our memory onto here as well. So that's the new container that we're getting out of this. And if I do a dot now here, we see that other shows up as a number. We can keep going with this, add test here as well, maybe to a string. And if we look at this, then we see that we get also other uh, test here that maps to a string. And if we were to use this somewhere, and let's say we use the same example he did with two different writers, right? And then we could say here as three writer and b file writer why is this right here we go of course the types uh we are using need to be defined first and if we wanted to we could do an a dot s3 writer write hello world now if we actually tried this this would crash with an null pointer because we did this here up here but this recreates the structure he had and obviously if he wanted to not construct this conditional in here which I wouldn't do either, um, then he can still do a thing like let uh, writer equals uh, use as three, and then he could do as as three writer, otherwise use the file writer. And then we could instead of that, just use the uh, writer down here. And then let's define, I'm not gonna use an environment variable because uh, this is faster. So we're gonna see if that works in a second. Uh, we need to add our actual container, right? The interesting part. Um, but that does the same thing and that alleviates the, the problem here. He still knows when which writer is chosen. Of course, we could also add a another one here that is conditional, um, but then we need to actually address the functions, which we will do in a second. A quick and easy way to do this is if we just define inner here and we return the inner instead and then this gets the register function here and now we can simply assign this uh, so we can say inner as any because I am too lazy to deal with the thing assign the value to the key and then return inner. And this might work. Yeah, so this works. Uh, we now wrote to S3 hello world. If we instead you uh, set this to false. Uh, and if we run this, then we're going to write to five. So all easy peasy, not an issue. Uh, but what if we wanted to inject things, right? Because this is a dependency injection thing. It should actually construct things um, like what we saw before. Let's add another writer and call it a logger. Logging. And let's change these here to functions instead. And they take in a logger of some sort, uh, writer. And here we're going to see the actual usefulness of a dependency injection framework. Okay, so that doesn't help us much because now we have the functions in here. So what we would want to have is that when we access the writer here, that it constructs the writer for us and injects this logger here, right? So first thing we're going to do is turn this into a function. Um, we can actually construct them and apply logic to them. Um, this doesn't really change anything else. This doesn't work because it's co uh, still getting the function here. So we still need to make this thing here, right? Then the error goes away. Now, of course, that is still not correct. We need to 
inject the logger in here somehow. But let's also register the logger. So we would like to access this, this logger somehow in here already. Um, so let's add this here and turn this into a function. I alluded to that earlier uh, that returns a value and it takes in the actual inner container. We can just straight up do this. So these turn into errors, obviously, um, but we can simply do that now. And this can now accept, accept the context. And from the context here, we have access to the logger. Um, one thing to, of note here is we can't build cyclical dependencies, which is a good thing, um, because cyclical dependencies, even with uh, dependency injections, is not generally a good idea. And the way we wrote it, we can only access the things we've defined up before. So uh, the order matters here. So what's the issue? Argument writer is not assignable to type writer. Yes, correct. I should have done this. Now we still need to actually provide this context here. Value is now a value constructor function, which for us means we can simply do this. Uh, and value should actually be even a function over here. And we can just do this. Again, I'm too lazy to type this uh, correctly. And this is fine because these are all internal ones. One has to be careful with any's. Um, but in theory, if we run this, this should work and the logger should be added automatically to us, uh, for us, which it wasn't because we are not calling the logger, right? So we should maybe also call the logger here, logger write using S3 writer using file writer. And if I run this now, now we should have the logger being used. And this is a sim very simple dependency injection container, and it does actually kind of all you need from a dependency injection container. Now there's scoping things, it's constructing it every time, and one could say, okay, there's more performant things here. Um, this is a mutable one, maybe it should return a new one instead, because um, if you store this and then reuse it somewhere else, then you're suddenly overwriting things, stuff like that uh, are issues. Um, eventually the type system will give up with the depth here. So there might be some optimization one needs to take there or use different dependency injection, like nest them at some point of time, but you could do that in code as well to some degree so that it still spits it out. Uh, so with a type system, you could extend this limit larger because there's recursion depth to, to this simply. Uh, we could also make this put this condition in here. Now, one big advantage here is we can put in anything we want here. It's registered under uh, this name and has the right type automatically. And I don't think using a container like this is any more complicated than what he suggested. Um, obviously, if we control click on, we'd still go to the uh, right, but like I said, that is the same thing in his case. I don't know why that is an issue for him because that's a co natural consequence of dependency inversion and not dependency container, uh, injection containers. Anyway, that was it from me. I hope you enjoyed. If you want me to build anything random from scratch, present a paper, go through something, or just chat, feel free to join my Discord, like the video, comment, all that stuff and have a good day. Where's the stop button?